Okay, this is a little more in-depth stuff about Vocabulary Builder, some stuff that just to give you some uh, stuff that makes it uh, more clinically applicable or makes it work better for some kids. The first thing, when you hit the blue button up here, and you go to the one that says Vocabulary Builder Menu, that takes you in here. Of course, here you can see I only have this one working, but if I touch over here now, then, th then if I touch this side, you can see I'm touching over here, I'm now working on this side. You can tell which side you're working on because the background again changes colors. So if I say spelled on mask and I do the word eat, comma, drink, comma, go, then it'll go find all those words. Now if you ever did one you didn't like or didn't want, you could, you could change this so you touch this side and now you would say spell to mask, which would now be pushing it from this side over here. But it's almost easier just to touch the one that you want to you want to hide, and then touch right here where it says mask, and it just pushes that one back. So you see, you can push keys back and forth by using this mask or unmask. Touch the key, and for instance, I could. It would make no sense to do it this way, but I could scroll way down here, find the word like sand. And then I could say unmask and it would push that over, but that's really slow. It's just really a lot easier to go down here where it says spell to unmask, spell the word red or whatever word you want, and then say OK. All right, so one more thing I want to show you about when using Vocabulary Builder. You see how my lines are existing here. So when I touch a sequence, when I hit the, like, when I want to find where drink is, when I hit it, then this one pops up. But I really think it's important to understand that you should be seeing this grid. They should not be floating in space. So I'm going to kind of show that to you quick. A lot of times I see people using a device and they're, they're not seeing the benefit of Vocabulary Builder is a great tool, but if the icons start floating in space is what I call it, uh, it doesn't have the same impact. You, you're actually, the staticness of the grid itself creates a benefit. Now, if you have a key guard on there, you'll never notice this happening. So some people will change it to uh, black or something. They'll change it to blank um, when they have a key guard. So see how they're floating now. So when I hit this one, see how there's just this icon floating in space. Now, if I had a key guard on there, it would actually create the grid, which would make it work just fine. But without a key guard, uh, those icons floating in space is inappropriate. So that's one of the examples of these small little things that you... To really follow the method well, you have to make sure you understand that you don't want icons floating in space. So I'm going to go back to my toolbox, back to my feedback menu. I'm going to go to my icon prediction and make sure it says white or gray or something like that, but not blank or black. Sometimes you see people with visual impairments using that feature, and that, that might be appropriate for them. But again, uh, it's, the grid itself, the static grid, the overlay, seeing it's the fourth one over and this third one down or the fourth one down, you're actually seeing that, sort of like why you can use a phone or why you can use the digits on your ATM card or something. The actual grid is very beneficial. Now, sometimes you create a list that you actually want to use again. So let's say this is a list of words that for some reason the child really loves. So I can save this list. So I can go in here to my Vocabulary Builder menu again the same way. I hit the blue button and I go to Vocabulary Builder menu and right down here it's quite easy. It says save as a sequence set. So I save it and I'll just name this one JH1 or something. Just something I can remember. If I say OK and I say OK again. Now again I can close this down really quickly by doing Vocabulary Builder off. And if I ever want to get back to it, the one I was in last, this key's a toggle. I can just do Vocabulary Builder on. So that's really slick. But if for some reason I changed this or lost this one, so I got to my Vocabulary Builder menu and I did mask all and I don't know, somehow I got into another list and I created and I ever wanted to get back to that JH1, it's really quite simple. I hit this blue button, I go to the Vocabulary Builder menu. Now down here at the bottom, just hit the one that says Advanced. Don't worry about why, but hit Advanced Options and then stay at the very top. Just stay up here at the top. Hit the one that says Use Sequence Set and then the one that says Load Sequence Set. And then you'll see I have two of them in here. Just go to the one that says JH1. Say OK. Say OK again and you'll be back to where you were. So this is a way to use Vocabulary Builder to have a list of words that you want to use again for some activity. Now let's say you're in this activity and just for the sake of this JH1 is some 
list that John's learned to use for some certain activity. And all of a sudden, in the middle of that activity, you realize that what I really like to do is tell people to stop. So you want to add to that list. So to add to a list without t starting all the way over, it's really quite nice. You just hit the toolbox, you go to your vocabulary builder menu, skip the mask all part. If you skip this, now sometimes you do have to touch over here to make sure you're at the, making sure this says spell to unmask and not spell to mask. So sometimes you have to touch on this side. Now I just say spell to unmask and I touch there and I spell the word stop. And when I say okay, now it pushes stop over to here, and you can see it exists over there. And when I hit OK, now you'll see stop exist. Now I want to give you a little warning. If this is something you want to keep in your new list, then you'd have to go back in here to your Vocabulary Builder menu, and you'd have to say Save as Sequence Set. You could either rename it or leave the name in as it exists and say OK. If you rename it, it warns you. It says you're about to replace it. Well, we want to add stop and keep it in there so you can say yes. So what you can do is update your list from words that they learned in that activity. Now the reason I want to warn you about something is that this is sort of contradictory to the LAMP philosophy. We don't believe that children have their vocabulary for circle time and their vocabulary for eating in the lunchroom and their vocabulary for going to art class, and their vocabulary for home and their vocabulary for school. That's not how language is taught. Once you learn a word, you usually have access to it. And what we like using Vocabulary Builder for is to, 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 in the middle of an activity, to give you the ability to say that word and learn the power of it. So you would traditionally not be in Vocabulary Builder. You'd be at whatever set of vocabulary you know, they're using, so your Vocabulary Builder would be off. You'd be in an activity where maybe they were, all of a sudden you realized that they liked saying sad to make people cry, or they said happy to make everybody laugh. So you wanted to give them the power of doing that, and you tried it a couple times, you touched here and tried to get them to say happy once or twice, but they just didn't do that well. So what you're going to do then is quickly go in here again to your Vocabulary Builder menu. You're going to say mask all. Then you're going to say spell to unmask, and then you're going to spell happy again. Then when you say OK, you'll see that it pushes it over, and you say OK again now. They're going to have a much better chance of being able to say that word happy a few times. Now after they've done it three or four times and you can see they're automatic and they're having fun with it, then you're going to go in here and you're going to bring everything back. You're going to turn Vocabulary Builder off with this little quick toggle key right there which says Vocabulary Off On. If they crash again, what's really nice is you can hit this and go to the Vocabulary Builder Off On again because it toggles, it takes you right back to you were last. So anyway, I hope that helps and lets you see how to use Vocab Builder to follow a kid's lead. There's a few other things, but uh, this is sort of the basics of Vocabulary Builder. I hope it helps.